All right, in this tutorial, we'll continue working with smoke, and we're going to look at the collision objects. In one case, you can use the collision objects as kind of a static object in the scene and let the smoke kind of bounce off of it and go around it. And you can see that in um, the animation and the tutorial I did on the rocket ship launch, and maybe I'll post a link on that in here as well so you can see that and the other thing is you can just well we'll just do that I'll just add another object to the scene let's add a cube to the scene real quick and we'll just set it up in here scale it way down and we'll scale it out on X but I'll scale it down I'll scale it on Y so it's just kinda like a it's kinda like this and the only thing I'm gonna do with this let me look at it in ortho view and kind of line it up so it's kind of in the center here alright and then from I better do it from the right as well ortho view this kind of gives us a pretty good idea then I'll make my frames I'll crank these back up to say 200 frames like this and I'm just gonna turn this into a slow let me we'll do it like 400 frames and I'm going to give this a slow rotation on keyframes, so I'm going to start here at this here, right? Uh, I'll just give it a keyframe. I'll press I rotation. And then up here at 400, using my wheel mouse to change that, like that. So then I'm going to press, I'm going to set another keyframe. I'm going to press R, Z. I'm just going to rotate it a few times. I won't rotate it too many times. It's just a couple of times, so it's kind of slowly rotating. And I'm going to press I rotation. So I have two keyframes. So let's see how that is. All right, there it is. It's kind of slowly rotating in the scene. And there's our smoke still flowing out of there as well. So nothing's going to happen until we turn it into a collision object, right? Smoke it wants to be a collision like this. So either static, animated, or rigid, right? So we're just going to do an animated object like this. Let's run it. Let's just see. Click this so you can see this here. And we'll see if we can see the effect. And you can see it already starting to swirl the smoke around like that. If you really want to control this, well, now there's one other thing we need to do here and that is, and this is pretty common amongst all the simulations whether they're fluid or soft bodies or uh, rigid bodies or things like that is the uh, cache. You come down here to the cache because by default the cache always two, ends at 250 so we're going to crank that up to 400 like that. Alright and then the one thing you want to do this is like there's two important secrets for me secret quote unquote secrets for doing a lot of animations alright one of them is one of the secrets is hidden surfaces and what we're going to do with this that's right we're going to turn it into a hidden surface well there's new there's numerous ways to do it but we just have an object here I'll just do it the easy way I'll just take the transparency and I'll crank down the alpha value and I'll click it so it's in there alright so hidden surfaces is, is this trick so now let's run it from scratch and see what it looks like Right, so it's kind of you're adding your own vorticity to the object, different than the vorticity that you would set up with the smoke, smoke effect. This is really powerful stuff, and oh yeah. But a lot of this comes down to um, these type of objects come down to uh, sophisticated mathematical surfaces. So I typically don't teach these type of uh, tutorials, and I might in the future because that then implies that you as an artist or an animator have to learn how to generate all these complex mathematical surfaces to make these sophisticated surfaces to interact with your objects or smoke or fluids and I assure you most artists don't want to do that so but for those of you who are scientists, engineers, physicists, things like that I'll address those in my intermediate and advanced tutorials and it makes a huge difference but, um, but to uh, kind of give you an idea you can still d generate these kind of surfaces in I generated the one in the rocket ship launch by hand and it does a pretty good job as well. Okay, well that's it for this lesson and I'll see you in the next lesson.